Mic check, mic check, mic check. How is the volume? So as you guys can probably tell, I haven't had much time to set up. I just got home from the Michigan Renaissance Festival and decided, what the hell, I'm going to stream tonight. And I inhaled a lot of smoke while I was there. Because there were fires everywhere. Of the pleasant kind. I spent a good hour in a tavern doing no drinking. <clears throat> so I've got everyone's favorite cure. a and root beer. So, I've got some pens to fix, and by some I mean a lot. Most of the pens on the paper towel I was just cleaning. Um, I guess I can figure out which parts go where. So I noticed something concerning in regards to uh, my Parker 75. I'm worried that I might need a new section for it because if you take a closer look at it, it doth appear to be rusting right there. And that don't seem right. So I'm probably just gonna soak this in rust soak for a little bit and uh, see what happens. I have a nice tub of WD-40 rust soak on hand. So, I'm not going to be reassembling the 75 today. <coughs> Just set that aside. <coughs> now, I have a few nibs in here. That's not immediately evident where they go. Here's the Parker 75 nib. Here's the Parker 75 section. <coughs> All right. We have the stub nib on our stub tuck away. Just give it a nice drying. So the Renaissance Festival was pretty fun. I spent so oh, nine hours there today. My feet are killing me. Um, I got to meet the Scottish bagpipe band Pictus. They're really cool. Uh, spent some time with them. Got a picture. I picked up their latest album, Fire, and they were kind enough to sign it for me, all three of them. That is a full stub. <coughs> Which one is it? This one? Yeah.
Check that out. I'd call that a stub. Thick too. <clears throat> yeah. Um, took a few videos of Pictus in action. They're going on the YouTube channel. Um, I captured a few rounds of the Royal Joust. So those are going to be on the channel as well. Yeah, this nib is not original to the Tuckaway. I just want to point that out. This is a nib swap. So that's that Tuckaway all clean. <clears throat> Let's put it up here. Next, dry out the nib on this balance. Yeah, lots of fun at the Renaissance Festival. A lot of people dress up, and I kind of want to as well, maybe next year. This is one of the pens I'm bringing with me to the Michigan Pen Show and the Ohio Pen Show this year. I want to pick the brains of Paul Arano and uh, I don't remember his name. There's another guy who knows his Schaefer stuff going to be at those shows. And I'm really curious about this clear section on the barrel. It's a vacuum filler. Um, late balance, judging by the clip, serialized nib, two-tone feather touch, no, not two-tone feather touch, sorry, two-tone lifetime. Absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful. Just completely stunning. Price stamped 875. <clears throat> My Kareen, unfortunately, has exhibited molding. Um, I believe there's mold growing in the section and the converter, so I have those soaking right now. Oh man, we got elves there. We got... I, I saw... Uh, what are they called? Um, oh, this is going to bug me. The, like, the cat race from the Elder Scrolls games. Shit, hang on. Khajiit, that's it. I think, I hope I'm not butchering that pronunciation. Khajiit. Um... A few people dressed up like that, you know, they had like masks on and uh, like tails. That's pretty interesting. <coughs> this is clean enough for me. Oh, did I? Try the nib. If you ever have the opportunity to go to something like a Renaissance festival, I definitely recommend it. There's a lot of cool people there, dressed up in a lot of cool costumes and a lot of cool events. There's my barrel. <clears throat> Some people think I'm crazy removing Triumph nibs so callously, but it makes cleaning these a lot easier. And I've gotten pretty good at it. <clears throat> now this guy... I don't have ink in you. Oh, 
Oh, that is a tight line cap. Where's my grippy? <clears throat> there it is. Just like that. I recommend these things. Pen, pen tooling sells them. They're great. <clears throat> My first in uh, a first vintage pen, Gray Schaefer's Imperial Four. Um, this dude could use some drying out. I guess it doesn't really matter. I rinsed it pretty unthoroughly. Tuck away his dry. You can put him away. <clears throat> I don't remember what pen you go to. This is the Targa. Something satisfying about water seeping through paper towel when you're drying a nib. I just don't like putting these away when they're soaking wet because then there's really nowhere for the water to go and bad things can happen. enough pens that I can move this now. <sighs> I am so backlogged. <coughs> Where even is my target barrel? It's probably in the case. Yep. <coughs> Such a nice brass imperial case that came with this Targa. This is sterling silver plated, very, very similar to the Parker 75 Cicel. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. So that's done now. Okay, slatches too. Now you, you go with what pen? What pen do you go with? You go with this one. This beautiful Lady Schaefer. Script cert. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to, uh, gonna have to take apart the nib assembly and shellac the clutch ring in place. And now, yeah, I wanna do that one right now. I'm not even gonna try to get this one perfectly dry. This is a part here, 61 capillary filler. <laughs> it's damn near impossible to get it perfectly dry. Unless you take the, uh, capillary filler itself apart, <clears throat> which I have done, which is incredibly stupid and risky, so I don't recommend it. I was lucky enough that I didn't break my pen. Generally, you just grab it and go flick, 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 flick for about an hour. It'll get all the water out, at least as much of it as you can get. Just make sure you don't hit anything when you're flicking it. This is a Schaefer's 
Lifetime Imperial 6 is a cartridge filler with the very Sentinel-esque cap design, steel with gold-plated band and clip. Of course it has the long diamond triumph nib stamped Schaefer's Lifetime 14 carat and a restricted mark and at the bottom here is USA. And this one came to me with a button converter, which I'm going to take a look at at some point, just make sure that the sack's in good condition, but not today. <clears throat> I can make sure this is dry. pretty dry. Put this one back with its button converter. I believe this is an Imperial 727 and the same with this one. We have the arrowhead or dunce cap nibs. This one has a squeeze converter. There we go. It's a really tight converter. That's good. So now I have an Eversharp Skyline to put back together. This Imperial, I believe, 555 still needs to be rinsed of its old ink, I believe. Technically a quasi-imperial. Yeah, there's ink in there. I will soak it at a later date. Now here is a slightly beaten up Triumph Crest. I obtained I don't know how long ago gonna need some work. At least the piston is not frozen. We might take a look at that tonight. I can put this Waterman Lady Patricia back together. Make sure it's dry. I believe this is a Lady Patricia. I could be mistaken. I am not well versed in Waterman products post-1940. I like to call this one my disco pen. <clears throat> I've been pinged on Discord. Uptime hours just bought an enormous Mont Blanc display case. It's really cool. So, this will go to the repair pile, I'll put the repair pile up there, and if these are dry, I'm going to put them in the Skyline bag. There's some really cool transparency in the Skyline cap.
when the nib is in it, you can almost, if you look closely, see the nib. Probably not going to capture that on camera, though. <coughs> It is a flexible nib. I'm going to put these parts into here. I'll put that back together later. Put the Waterman carrying cap up there. And now, Winston has sent me a box. <clears throat> I haven't opened the box yet. All I know is that there are several pens inside. And by several, I mean a lot. Screw doing this on camera. There we go. Winston has sent me a Tupperware container. It's what I've always wanted. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine pounds. He said I have till the end of the year, so I'll try to keep that deadline. see a white dot. Uh, touchdown. Oh boy, that's stiff. Ooh, that is incredibly stiff. This is a touchdown Statesman with a serialized nib, very firm. I think this is a fat touchdown. Let's grab. This is a snorkel, but it is the same width as a thin model touchdown, and this is a fat touchdown. So we'll get into that pen. Pen number two. Another nerd line cap. This one has the white dot at the top of the cap, 
and it is a valiant. Another triumph nib. Although, this triumph nib is actually it might be a little bit slimmer. This one's a vacuum fill. This would be very late 40s. <clears throat> and the fat touchdown is 1949 or very early 1950. Ooh, I already see barrel transparency on this tuck away. This is also a Valiant. Triumph nib. And now, as to be expected, vacuum fill. Yep. Mmm. Floating clutch ring. I think. cap threads just aren't grabbing it. That's going to be an interesting fix. Here we have a gold cap. This is a Crest. The white dot on the blind cap is missing. Oh boy. It appears the inner cap is actually pulling out of the pen. Very, very sharp, firm triumph nib. Actually, it writes. All right, Winston, I'm done with this one. Here we have a jeweler's band balance. No price stamp. Vacuum fill. Marine green. Oof, oof, that is a semi flex nib. How's the tine alignment? Pretty good. Is it smooth? Very smooth, very flexible. Plunger's not frozen on this one. That's a hell of a pen you have there. One point four five line width without ink. It'll be a little bit wider when you ink it up. This one's probably a tuck away. Yes. Another Valiant. Triumph. Very little palladium masking is left. Backfill. It has a loose culturing. 
is probably a tech away as well. Yep, Marine Green. Schaefer, Sovereign, too, I believe. No. What would I call this? Price stamp, 17, wait, 1850. This is a late model. I'm going to hold off on identification until I can be reasonably certain. Lifetime Imperial for Good God, is that a silicone sack? I believe it is. Is this a Lifetime Imperial? It does not say lifetime on the cap. Twenty-three karat gold electroplated. Oh, I see. Very fancy. I believe that's part of my payment. Ah, Sentinel. First year model. White cap present. Rather, white dot present at the tip of the blind cap. Ooh, this is really nice. It is personalized. Elton Howland. And the price stamp is 1500 Stiff blind cap. And the plunger rod is not frozen. So those are all the pens that Winston has sent me. This one looks nice. I like it. Now, first things first, we're going to remove the nibulet. To do that, we will need our heat gun. It makes me happy that I'm using my heat gun today. It's very cold out. Yesterday the temperature went down to 49 degrees Fahrenheit.
definitely thread sealant in there. heat. Just want to kind of keep it at critical temperature and let that heat really seep into the sealant. Just like that, it's cold again. I really wish Fountain Bell was still selling his Triumph nib removal tools. It would make this first process so much simpler. Here we go. It's coming out now. Oh. Unfortunately, I twisted the feed very slightly in the process, so I'll be remedying that before the final reassembly. But our nib unit is out, no worries for wear, and now I can have a look inside the pen. Plunger washer looks like it is still intact in one piece. What kind of blind cap do we have? We have a floating nut. D11, D11C. No. D11B. And it came out easy. Winston, I'm happy. Your pen is behaving. I 
Like I said, it's threat sealant. It's unexpected. Normally they're easy. Thankfully they're very easy anyway. I've gotten it started, but it is being stubborn. There we go. Good old left, right, left, right wiggle action does it. Helps break it free. It really doesn't want to come off. Too bad. Typically when that when they are so difficult to get off it's either because of rust or thread sealant. In this case it was thread sealant. have a look at this. The plunger rod, it has some minor pitting. That's definitely reusable. I'm going to have to use my grippy pad to get the nut off as well. I just felt it. Just felt it slip. Very, very tight fits. That makes me happy. And the old o ring is hard as a rock. Washer, rather. I always call it an o ring. It's actually three different tools. You can find them on pentooling.com. I just took all three tools and since they had a hole in the back, I just put them on a key ring. Now, one thing I do recommend with these is oil them. I think these are rust spots developing. So I'm gonna drop this in my rust soak after tonight and oil it afterwards. 
Mm. All right, this one's ready for drilling. Before I go any further, I need to find my bag of bags so that I can safely ignore all these small pieces without losing them. Here it is. So I'll be washed later. Now then. I'm going to drill out the packing material that is currently in the packing unit of this pen. And then I'll move on to the next pen. I don't think I posted my stream notification on Instagram. Oh well. progress. making very little progress. I think this washer is actually soft. And if that's the case, I can just pick it right out. Not with that. With this. I always drill by hand. I don't actually have a power drill, and even if I did have a power drill, I still wouldn't use it because it's easier for me to feel by hand exactly how deep I've cut into the packing material. And I can tell the difference between hardened rubber and celluloid by feel. And I don't want to drill any celluloid.
I don't really have my setup centered very well, do I? That just goes to show this was a hastily thrown together stream. I think that's a little bit better. Good enough for who it's for. Am I right? I'm not sitting terribly centered myself, so. Oh, I forgot to put my link on the server. doing absolutely nothing now. I have another bit in here. I'm going to try my reamer before that. This one really needs a rust bath. It's seen better days. Mm. I feel the packing material rotating with the reamer. But only if I push in hard. Let's take a look. Hmm. Yeah, there's a touchdown in there too. These are pens that I'm not really doing. These are Winston's. And this one. I'm just trying to drill out the packing materials on this Sentinel right now. Looks like that shooted up pretty good. Not getting much out of the drilling right now. 
I may need to dehydrate this and then try. There's some great sheen going on in the barrel right now, though. beginning somewhere. Yeah. I hear sirens outside. They're coming for me. We're gonna take this thing to Fountain Pen Hospital. Technically, it's drilling out. something different. Let's see if that made a difference. Vecfils are interesting creatures. They're either ridiculously difficult or ridiculously easy. I haven't decided this one yet. I think it might be on the difficult spectrum even though I had such little difficulty removing everything else. A little bit. But that's alright. It's a fun gig. If this damn rubber would just agree to get drilled out already, 
to be done with it. Out of curiosity. Ooh. I might ask Winston if I can take that in payment as well. Um, this part is worse. The mecha is really simple. All you really have to do is just not fuck up. It's nowhere near as tedious as the drilling. I'm pretty good at not fucking up. I mean, it's a pretty good life lesson. Don't get hit. What's the matter with you? Why are you so bad at Monster Hunter? Just don't get hit. Before that, don't talk shit. I have bagpipe music stuck in my head now. There's worse things you could have stuck in your head. I actually quite like bagpipe music. Matt, I will ban you. This is annoying.
it's like if I press too hard it just rotates but if I press too I guess soft it just kind of skates over the rubber eating none of it. It's not biting at all. Hmm. Need to have me a thonk. How am I gonna get you out? There's the curved tip I want. <clears throat> nice and hook shaped. I want to take a few chunks out of that rubber seal. Hopefully just drag it all up in one piece, but just like that. Here we have the very soft and flexible pliable rubber seal and one and a half felt washers Now then, That's disheartening. There's another rubber seal with possibly more felt underneath it. As per usual, however, it's not something unexpected. Let's see if we can get it out in the same fashion. I think my hook needs to be hookier. That's pretty hooky.
There we go. Now that looks like celluloid. I'm going to drill it up a little bit just to make sure. It behaves like it's rubber. Ooh, that was eBay. Guys, do I want a 12 pen salesman display case? I'm kind of conflicted on it. I'm probably going to put in a snipe on Gixon. Free shipping. It has one bit on it right now. What do you think the max bit should be? 20? Twenty five and one cent. Let's do twenty five and one cent. Okay, twenty five point one. I think that's ten cents. If anyone would like to snipe me on that, feel free. I won't be upset if I don't get it. I already have another case on the way. Anyway. Back to the grind. I'm going to poke around in there with this and see what I can catch. Hard to say. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's a rubber seal. Oh, shit. Got it. That's what I get for reading chat. I need to hammer out a new tip. And by hammer, I mean bend. He's ready. 
to fish out a rubber seal. Great transparency though, considering it's a gray pearl. Actually, technically, with a gold trim ring, this might actually be a faded marine green. A silver pearl, or gray pearl, technically comes with chrome plated trim. Typically, Chrome plated. <sighs> Where did I put that? Pick. That's awkward. So in probably about 10 minutes, we'll learn the results of the auction. And we'll see if I've wasted money tonight. Oh yeah, that's rubber. It's floating. I can tell because of the way it is. Also, I finally made a mark on it. And when I press down hard and rotate, the spot moves. All right, time to rebend this.
There we go. A very tiny fish hook shape at the end of that now. Uh-oh, that sounded like eBay. Ooh, another... Oh, that's right. I don't want to buy that. I know this is thrilling footage, guys. I'm sure you're all on the edge of your seats, wondering whether I'm actually going to get this packing material out. Damn it. That's what I keep doing. Ping. What could it be? It is someone trying to start a VC party. I'm busy. I mean, like, worst comes to worst, I could always leave that in there. Because the Noom packing material doesn't take up much space at all. But, you know, it wouldn't be professional. I mean, in the early 90s, when it was deemed that these were actually repairable. Because it wasn't until fairly recently, being eh, 30 years ago, that people actually devised a method of restoring Schaefer vacuum fillers. Rather than soaking the pen and stuffing a bunch of silicone grease on the plunger and working it a bunch of times and hoping that that seal holds. Um, where's it going with that? Oh yeah. The <clears throat> early vac fill restoration advice involved removing the triumph nib and the plunger rod putting new packing material in without drilling out the old stuff and then you just put it back together man i'm assuming you made a pun but i don't remember what i said that you might be responding to so sorry I wonder if I can push it.
the other bit. Tiny, tiny bit of dust, like three specks. some progress. Oh, Winston. These are going to take a while. Might be able to pick it out now. Yeah. It's almost infuriating. I'm so close, and yet so far. I've chunked it. Man, I don't ask for these. People send them to me, I fix them. They give me money, I'll do anything. I'll do anything for a buck. See, the fucked up part is I've been live for an hour and a half. And this is still the first pen. <laughs> this is going to be a multiple stream project. Like, there are pens that I'm not even going to examine tonight. And I don't even charge sky-high prices because 
I enjoy the work. It's my hobby, man. But I think I'll probably keep Winston as a special customer just because I like him and he's a really cool dude and he sends me a lot of pens. But I don't think I'm going to be doing restoration work for random plebeians anymore. Winston's cool. Winston lets me take my time. He doesn't care when I, he gets his pens back so I can take my time, do him right. Everyone else, I kind of feel rushed, you know? I don't like feeling rushed. It's my hobby. So I'll get these pens fixed as best as I can. Um, there's a couple that it's questionable about. They're going to need some special repairs. I wonder if I'll be able to reinsert the inner cap into this. Well, maybe if I just give it a whack whack. Give it some of the old whack whack. There we go. All done. Now the thing about it is I think the clutch ring is loose. Oh yeah, the clutch ring is loose. So just to give you guys an idea of what I'm talking about. Very loose. So I will try to seep some shellac into there or something or another at some point, but hey! <laughs> the inner cap is now fully into the crest cap. And it's got some dents and whatnot, but hey, the clip is nice and springy and tight. Um, I am actually going to just gently bunk it a little bit deeper. There we go. Just so it's a nice tight fit. Once the clutch ring stops rotating, that will be a really nice tight fit of a cap. But we're not going to worry about any, this one anymore for the time being. We still have to get the uh, other one thingy, this. Still have to get that last rubber washer out of there so I can remove the last of the felt. <sighs> Root beer. So good. So, we're so close, too. So very close. It should only take another hour. I really need a monitor in front of my face. I'm looking like 90 degrees to my left to read if there's any new chat. I mean, hell, it's been an hour and a half. I removed two rubber washers. For some reason, later Schaefer Vacfills used three. But, eh, you know, I'm not in any kind of hurry. I'll just keep picking away at it and see if I can get her out. while thinking back to happy memories of the Renaissance Festival. 
Because damn, that was a lot of fun. And God, are my feet sore. So much walking. Yeah, I had to walk almost a mile from my car to the front gate. 18,000 people turned out. Oops. I did it again. Dude, it was... There was so many people. And about a third of them were dressed for it. Knights in full regalia. Squires. I saw a pair dressed up as... <clears throat> King Arthur and his squire from Monty Python and the Quest for the Holy Grail. Um, Matt. Bear with me, guys. I'm showing you a picture. There you go. Look at that. He's even got the coconuts. Look at that. Isn't it great? They were badass. There were so many people dressed up. There was a dude dressed up as Starscream for some reason. I don't know why he was at the wrong con. It was a lot of fun. Those guys probably had no idea they'd end up on a pen restoration live stream. No. No. I hope that's never a thing. Alright. So for this, I'm gonna say fuck it. I'm gonna soak it. Hopefully soften up the rubber to such a point that I can pick it out. Because right now I've picked out so much of the inside of the washer that it's more like an o-ring that's stuck in there. So this, sec this barrel will go into the bag and I want to look at Let's see, this is blah. I want to look at this touchdown. This is a nice fat touchdown. And the clutch ring appears to be loose. No, clutch ring is not loose. It's just a tight fit. Usually, there we go. Oh boy, look at all that scary stuff. Let's zoom in on that. Ta da! We got some ink and some thread sealant. So, there is no need to remove the nib. 
Let's grab this pushy thingy. One of my snorkel sack pushers. Just push the sack out. Ah, uh, I was really hoping it would come out in one piece. I would have added it to my ossified sack collection. So, this looks inky and oily and dirty. Just the way I like it. No rust. Excellent. Oh fuck, I forgot to refocus. <laughs> yeah, this is the sack. It came out in two solid pieces. I'm a professional streamer. I get paid for what I do. Just chip away this old sack. I fully expect Matt to insert a pun here somewhere. If it's chip off the old something, I'm going to be severely disappointed in him. Because he can do better than that. Yeah, I don't get paid for streaming at all. I just fix pens and then people say, thanks, have some money. I would get paid for this regardless whether I streamed it. Oh, I'm almost done. I agree. There we go. Just a little bit of cleaning up to do. Yeah. If I applied for a partnership and got paid for my streams, then I could no longer use this amazingly beautiful track. Also, I don't have 50 followers. <laughs> I have half that. So the old sack has been eradicated. The clutch ring. It's the slightest bit loose, but it doesn't freely rotate. Time to reach into my bag of bags. Get a bag for this pen's parts to live in. Where the fuck did I put the barrel? Here it is. I'm going to remove this silver trim ring because there is absolutely nothing holding it on and I don't want to lose it. Now, now I grab my screwdriver, 
which is probably in my tool drawer. Possibly in my tool drawer. Oh, I'll be at the Ohio Pen Show this year, if any of you are going. I might have already said that. I'm bringing rare Schaefer's. I'll be there all four days of the show, so let me know if you'll be there and we can meet up and say hi. Where the hell is my screwdriver at? Is it up here somewhere? Holy shit, are you going to buy that waterman? Because that's pretty hot. I have no idea if it's a good price or not, but it's pretty hot. screwdriver has abandoned me. That's not good. Yeah, the nib looks like it's in good shape. The imprints look like... Actually, the nib looks slightly downturned. It might have been dropped. to say. Oh, damn. Uh, got it. Here's a video of a restored for 52 with the same overlay. Um. Mr. Non-Deterministic Automata. Are you in one of the Discord servers that I frequent? Because I don't recognize your username on Twitch. I guess I can turn this off. Oh, God, that explains why you're penabling me. Okay. Yeah, that's really tempting. It's really, really tempting. 
I think it would go great with my gold overlay Morrison. But where the fuck is my screwdriver? <laughs> what the hell? I can't take apart touchdowns without my screwdriver. Damn. Good God, that is an enormous Mont Blanc cabinet, dude. Damn. Good shit. How much did that cost you? Because that is really cool. Just gonna say I'll look for it later. So I have no idea where it is, where it could be, where it has gone. It's not on my desk. It's not in my desk. It's vanished. Uh. Oh shit. <laughs> Why do you do this to me? See, Omas doesn't really do anything for me. Oh, by the way, I didn't get that case. Is it the 23rd? Yep. <sighs> Alright, I have some, another small waterman on the way. Damn you. Yeah.
Well, this is going in the parts bag until I find my damn screwdriver. It pisses me off. I don't know where it could be. Which one do I want to look at next? How about this crest? Winston seemed really uh, not convinced that it was salvageable. Also has ink in it and writes really nice. The blind cap is cocked at an angle. It is a floating blind cap. Okay, so. I don't suppose you'll want to just come out, huh? Time for a heat gun. What, the Omas? Ah. Yeah. Oh. Well. The blind cap just fell off. A... Italian pens in general don't really do anything for me. I just, I don't know. I don't know why I don't like them, I just don't. I know that'll upset Dave. Yeah, at one point I was also considering a London Fog, but Kind of decided against it. Wow, this nib's coming out really easy. Just finger strength. Oh my, that's a lot of bubbles. Yeah, Winston seemed really not optimistic about this pen. Why are there so many bubbles? It's positively soaking in there. I'm just gonna let that dry. And dry this out a little bit. That is honestly part of the thing about Vintage Schaefer is you can get a lot of really great vac fillers really cheap. It's just they're unrestored. That being said, Sterling Silver Targa in a brass imperial case, 26 bucks. I don't think you can beat that. <laughs> All right, 
try it. Oh yeah, that's right. All right, the floating nut and the stopper are both in here. Is this a B? It looks like a B. Oof. It's not a B. Is it a? No, it should be a B. Let me get my gripper. Yep, it's totally your fault too. There we go. Required some wiggling, but it's coming out now. Slow, but sure. Oh shit, hi Yukon. I hope you like your pen. That one was a little bit of a problem child, but I got her done. the camera with my forehead. Alright. You go in here. 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 For now, I will put these two in here as well. They're, they will be soaking after I end the stream. I'm just kind of focusing on disassembly tonight. Sweet. Yeah, it writes really nice. Them old Schaefer Triumph dibs, man. Fucking love them. Eeny, meeny, miny, that one. Let's take a look at this jeweler's band. This is great. I love jeweler's bands. They're one of the undocumented options. These jewelers bands were not in the catalogs for the Schaefer Balance. It's like the secret menu at a fast food joint. Oh yeah, I need to put the cap in here too. I don't think I'll need to use heat for this. These sections generally come out pretty easy. Except in this case. Heat is required. This is a nice semi-flex nib for those of you who missed it. Um, I'll do a close-up. Look at that. Look at that. That's hardly any pressure at all.
and it's very smooth and it doesn't catch on paper. I have a feeling this is going to be a very wet medium-ish with flex. Fine medium. Typically, junior nibs do have some flex, and this is a junior nib. I'd call that warm enough for a first attempt. That's all it took is a little bit of heat and this section unscrews right out. Now what kind of blind cap are we dealing with? Regular old plain Jane no nut. These are easy. Just squeeze them in my rubber pliers to keep the rod from rotating. And it's still rotating. It's a better grip. And you can just unscrew the blind cap proper once you immobilize the rod. I know, right? The junior nibs are fucking amazing. There we go. Need to immobilize the plunger rod again. Do that with my pliers. Use my grippy and unscrew the plunger gasket nut. Doesn't it? to be moving. They might have thread sealant on this one. I've been up for two and a quarter hours now. Hope everyone's doing all right. Enjoying the show. A little bit of heat goes a long way. Oops. Well, the washer was still pliable. It's gone now. On the floor somewhere. Good thing I don't need it. Okay. This one's all disassembled. No reason to knock out the nib on this. So I'm just going to grab another bag and throw it in there. We can move on to the next pen. Very handsome balanced junior in marine green with a jeweler's cap no less.
Next, let's have a look at a tuck away. If I recall correctly, this one was going to be a problem child. The clutch ring is loose. The plunger, not quite frozen. Floating nut. Possibly a... It's a cartridge! Look at that! We can very easily solve our clutch ring issue with that. Unfortunately, means the nib is going to be a bit of a pain, most likely. Nothing little he can't fix, right? More about which pen? The uh, Marine Green Junior? Or the Tuck Away? Ouch. That metal's hot, but it unscrews easy. There we go. There's the nib unit out. The tuck away. Tuck aways are pretty great pens. This, so this is the tuck away that most people know and love. Right? It's got the short clasp. It's got a short body. Typically they came with Triumph nibs, although later ones had open nibs, and earlier ones, technically. Because this is a first year Schaefer tuck away. Yes. These came with open nibs. Um, this one is personalized JS. Actually has threads on the back for secure posting. And becomes basically a full size pen when you post it. They came only as lever fillers. And they were so wildly unpopular that Schaefer redesigned it to the tuck away you know. Although they didn't always have these spring-loaded spring clasps on them. Um, there are tuck aways without any sort of clip. They have a white dot up there, but no clip or clasp. <clears throat> I believe the clasp was added due to the prevalence of women in the workforce around 1942, 1943, because of the number of women working in textile factories and whatnot for the war effort. And it just became practical to be able to clip your pen onto your shirt. But they still wanted the class to be diminutive and feminine because that's the marketing they had back then. Small dainty things were marketed to women and big strong things were marketed to men. It was just the times back then. But yeah, tuckaways are cool. Um, Highly collectible. There's so many different kinds. It's unbelievable. Where are my tuckies at? Where are my tuckaways? Where did I put them? Oh, I know that. They're underneath all these supplies 
from Independence that I never put away, aren't they? All these supplies! Yep. Oops. Here's a bunch of tuckaways. Here's one you can see without the clasp. It has a white dot, but no clip. And they came in just about every color and trim that the Schaefer Triumph pens came in. Anyway. If you want to learn more about the Tuckaway, uh, richardspens.com has a great page on it. For some reason, you won't be able to access it through Google. You have to actually go to richardspens.com and search his website using his search tool on the left. And I've done a few Instagram posts loaded with info about him. And I think Pen Hero might have something on them as well. But Tuckaways are really, really cool pens. They came in the touchdown filling mechanism as well. If that's your thing. Now, restoring the cartridge back fillers is so hilariously, ridiculously easy. Because you can just drill it from the back. You can see exactly what you're doing. It's great. I love it. It's just getting them apart can sometimes be a pain in the ass because sometimes they glue them in place. All right, time for another baggie. Hmm. It appears a wafer of some kind has fallen out of the barrel. What do you guys think it is? I really don't know.
pretty great transparency if only you could uh, see it through the opaque black barrel. Another one down. Three left. Let's look at this problem child. It would be too simple. Far too simple. If this was a cartridge fill. Another easy nib. Oh man. After that first pen, they're spoiling me. Look at that. It's got that clear plastic nib collar. So, ideally, when I clean it, it should be transparent ish. And this is another folding nut, another for the D11B key. This one's seen some workout today, man. And to think on my earliest live streams, I said, I don't need no wrench. I could do it with my fingers. Nah, it's so much easier with tools. I highly recommend you get yourself some tools. Tools are great. If you have tools, you can whack whatever you want. If you have tools, you can poke through whatever you want. Rod looks good too. If you have tools, you can still use your fingers to remove this nut sometimes. There we go. Time for another bag. I got a hundred of these bags on eBay for like you know, 10 bucks. So worth it. So, so worth it. I don't ever have to worry about losing a piece or mixing pieces. Next up 
This guy, this guy. I want to do a quick Google search. See if I can figure out exactly what he is. Hey, have a good one, Yukon. Yeah, that is a tuck away sovereign too. Okay. That's what I thought. But I was uncertain. Don't have to worry about that clutchering. Ooh, boy. Ooh, boy. That's stiff. Nope, not cartridge. Cool. Time for heat. Bumped my damn camera again. Attempt number one. Mm, I'm gonna say you don't want to budge. It's all because I praised the last nib I pulled. Now there's still three of you guys watching? You don't have anything better to do on a Sunday night than watch men struggle with pens? Thank you. I'm happy I'm entertaining somebody. Try this again. Ha <laughs> ha. Maybe not. Ha <laughs> ha. The nib is unscrewing, not the nib unit. Hmm. Yeah, the nib came out, but the feed remained. Alright, I might have to use my chopstick method. Pretty sure I can extract the feed. Hmm. 
Unfortunately, I bent one of the fins in the process. Hopefully I can put it back. Well, this is a new one for me. Let's see if I can extract it. I might need to soak it for a while. I think that would be the wise thing to do before I continue. But hey, we have a feed. <laughs> Yeah, this is going to get soaked. I don't want to tempt fate. Mm. Mm. It's actually coming out. Well, it was. Okay, yeah, I'm just going to soak it. I don't want to tap the bait. So, get another bag. I don't spend as much time with pens as I would like, so pens are kind of my part-time job. There we go. Now, lastly, is this booger. It's a cartridge. A cartridge, full-size cartridge vac, Valiant. This is pretty cool. I like it. Alright, this nib came out pretty easy. It smells awful. Another floating nut. D11B gets to play again. go. Yeah. 
Actually, I think D11C is a better fit. Maybe just D11. No, it's D11B. What do you know? This spine cap has the metal nut cap inside of it. Intriguing. And this thing was, the stopper was only three full turns away from unscrewing completely. part of the rubber washer on the plunger rod. That's that. And that's all of Winston's pens disassembled. And none ready for reassembly. I'm gonna grab another bag. I will clean these post stream and hopefully next week, assuming I don't work, can resume our odyssey. Check. Gasket stopper. Check. Or the gasket nut. I have two stoppers here. Oh no. Which one did I forget? Put one in here. I should put the cap in there. The cap has a strange, almost bubblish feature to it. I'm assuming, let's see, this one's got a stopper. I never took this one apart. It's probably this one. This is why you shouldn't work on pens when you're tired. Yep, it was this one. Okay. So all of Winston's pens are disassembled. Let's have a look at this. 
Oh yeah, I remember this one. Bless me. Excuse me. I'll clean that one up later. It says Schaefer on the side of the clip. And USA on the other side. Okay. Goodness me. Oh, I'm so tired. You have no idea. This one? This is one of the few open nibbed tuckaways that I have non serialized due to when it was turned. This is a fat touchdown. It could stand to use a polishing. Very short touchdown, being that it is a tuck away. And one thing I always check on tuckaways is I check the clasp for cracks. And this one. This one has no cracks anywhere except at the rear of the cap. For some reason, that's where the cracks decided to form. Ah, nice. up a little bit. Now there's something I've been meaning to do. You may have noticed earlier when I used my knife, it doesn't want to open all the way. So I've been meaning to take it apart and give it a nice cleaning. You know what? Damn it. So, naturally, we're going to hit it with a hammer. No. I'm going to take it apart, give it a quick WD-40, even though it's not really the stuff that you're technically supposed to use. It still lubricates it for several months, and that's kind of what I want. The question is, which bit is the right bit? Too big. Still too big. So I'd like to just do this real quick because I've been procrastinating and I've been forgetting to do it. 
And opening Winston's package earlier reminded me just right. Let's see. Might as well also clean the crud out from under the clip. What size bit are you? Let me take a wild guess. Right on the money. That's right, still one more that I was leaving. Still, no unscrewing required. There we go. screwed that all the way but I evidently did not a lot of pocket lint in there. Let's close that back up for now. I don't know why this doesn't want to come out. Last time I did this it came right out.
on getting it. It's just being difficult. I think I'm getting it. <laughs> Can at least get this thing out of the way, I think. Yep. There we go. Now she's coming out. There we go. Alright. There goes the spring. with a lot of oil stuff, really greasy dooby stuff. All right, so what concerns me is this orange shit. That might be rust. Because it's certainly not Cheeto dust. It smells like rust. All right. There you go, bumping the camera with my face again. All right, I am going to degrease the shit out of this and put it in rust soak, I suppose. Get all the pocket lint out of it. So I'm going to go do that, and I can't really do that in front of the camera, so seeing as we just passed three hours, I'm going to call it a night. people have a wonderful night right on <laughs>